All right, so here is an AP exam uh, free response question, and uh, this talks about um, uh, rate of bees entering a hive and rate of bees leaving the hive. So you have bees flying in and bees flying out at the same time. Uh, we're also told that we have a certain number of bees in there at time zero when we start. And so this question is asking uh, about how we keep track of the bees that are in the hive at any given time considering the different rates that are going on. And those rates are described differently, right? The rates change over time. They're described by this, but the actual rate at a certain time would be different than at another time. It's not a straight line, is what I'm saying. This one is a straight line. Uh, the, the rate is, is um, constantly, you know, going at, at the same, it's changing at the same rate. This one is changing at a different rate all the time. Anyways, so um, why don't you take a look at this question, pause the question, give this a try. Uh, work for 10, 15 minutes is what you get on the AP exam. So why don't you pause the video, work for 10, 15 minutes, and uh, then come back and we'll talk about the answers. All right, so hopefully you've had a chance to uh, give this question a try. And um, I did highlight some important things here at the beginning. The fact that we have 3,500 bees at the beginning, uh, the time span is zero to four hours. Bees enter the hive at this rate. So this is a rate. It's, it's equivalent to a first derivative. It's a rate. Uh, bees also leave the hive at this rate. So it's going to be a combination of entering and leaving, combination of those two rates as to how those the bee population changes over time. A says, how many bees leave the hive during the time interval from zero to two? So if we're talking about how many bees, okay, that's an actual number of bees. So we take the rate and we integrate to get the actual number. Okay, so how many bees leave the hive? We want a quantifiable amount of bees that, uh, that we can get from the rate that we're given. So that involves an integral. So here's 6a, and here's the solution under here. So you should have 2,600. Remember, each uh, this number, when you find that integral, represents hundreds of bees. So let's just zoom in a little bit here so we can see this a bit better. So if we take... So if we take the integral of the rate of leaving between the hours of 0 to 2, so those are your limits of integration, okay? And of course, the rate of leaving is given by negative 2 plus 15 right here. So we take that integral. Now, remember, to take an integral, we need to take the antiderivative of each term in the integral. This is an easy integral. This is a no calculator question. So you're not going to it's not going to be some crazy, you know, 3x squared sine of pi of t or whatever it's not going to be something it's going to be something that you're going to be able to do pretty easily so take the antiderivative evaluate at 2 minus the antiderivative evaluate at 0 you should get 26 you will have to make sure that you remember that's not just 26 bees it's 2600 it says the rates the where they're measured in hundreds of bees per hour okay so 2600 bees that's the answer for a please note you get one mark for the correct integral here one mark for the correct integral, uh, including the dt. You get one mark for finding the antiderivative, and you get one mark for the answer here, okay, and stating the answer. All right, okay, so b, let's take a look at b now. Well, actually, I'll just go down here and show you the solution as well, because you've had a chance at this. So b says write an expression involving one or more integrals for the total number of b's in hundreds in the hive at time t for 0 to 4. Okay, so over the whole period, what is an expression for this? Find the total number of bees at the hive at t equals 4. So it's the second part of the question. So the total number of bees are going to be your uh, number of bees in hundreds. Remember, this is in hundreds, so this 3,500 should just be 35. 35 plus the integral from 0 to t, whatever t is, because remember it says at time t. So 0 to t, and we want to take the um, rate of entering, subtract the rate of leaving. All right, so you get one mark for the expression for the total. So that is, that is this right here. This is worth one mark. And when it says at time t, you have to make sure you have t as your upper limit of integration there. From 0 to t, whatever t is going to be. You could plug in whatever t, hour 1, hour 1 1.7, hour 2, whatever. So you could always find the number of bees at any t. 
Now it says find the total number of bees at the hive at t equals 4. So here's where we actually find, um, we put t equals 4 in there. So we have the same expression because bees are coming and going and coming and going. And, and what is the snapshot at 4? So we put x equals 4 in or t equals 4 in there. And uh, when you do this, again, no calculator uh, for this one. So you should uh, subtract those two expressions. Find the antiderivative, evaluate from 4, um, you know, 4 and then minus, evaluate at 0, and you should get 55. So that, of course, is 5,500 Bs. That is at time equals 4. Okay? So you get uh, one question, or one mark for the expression. You get one mark for the uh, antiderivative, finding the antiderivative here, okay, doing this properly. And then you get one mark for your answer down here. Okay, that's the breakdown. Any any questions? Online class now, any questions? Okay, so the question was, uh, can we write two integrals? Yeah, I think you can. Um, it, it says involving one or more integrals. So you can write this as two integrals, and of course that would look something like this. You have 35 plus the integral of 0 to 4 of um, you know 16x minus 3x squared dx minus the integral of 0 to 4. And again, it's over the same, the full um, span of time. So 0 to 4, 0 to 4, you don't split those uh, limits up. But then you're going to subtract the integral of the rate of leaving. So something like that, uh, yeah, that's perfect for that integral. One or more integrals. Good question. Okay, that's B. So let's take a look at C here now. So C says find the minimum number of Bs in the hive. Okay. So they're going to throw something like this at you, and they're going to say, okay, you know, at time zero, right, you've got 3,500 bees. So the bees come and, and leave, and so the, the, it kind of looks like this at any given time. And there's going to be some point maybe where there's an absolute minimum number of bees, right? So here's the number of bees at, well, actually, what is it, 55? Starts with 35? Okay, so it's actually, it keeps going. So technically, our graph might look something like this. Okay, and here's 5,500. Here's 3,500 where we started. So I don't know exactly what it looks like, but you understand that there, there's going to be some point here where there's going to be a, a minimum value. Either it's going to be here at the start, or it's going to be somewhere in between. It can't be at the end, because the end is, you know, the end is bigger than the start. So we already know that's not the minimum. But you, we don't know what this looks like, right? It could look like something, something like this. Right, and so this is the minimum, or it could look like the blue graph, and this would be the minimum, the time where there's the minimum, right? So whatever. So that's what we have to figure out. Now, how do we do that? Well, when we find minimum, remember local extrema, local minimum. So we have to find where that um, where that derivative is, you know, is is negative and then zero and then positive. That's one way to find a minimum number of b of b's. Okay. So what do we what do we do here? Let's see what they say here. Let b of t equal the total number of b's in hundreds uh, at the hive. Okay, b of t. So we're going to have 35 plus, and this is the integral from last question. Okay. So if we um, uh, if we take a look at this and, and evaluate this integral, which we did in the previous question, I guess, um, then we can have an expression for the number of b's. So remember, this is number of b's. So they, they didn't actually um, consider the, they're not actually considering the derivatives. What they're actually doing is they're actually taking a look at the, at the, at the graph. Oh yeah, they are doing the derivative. Not bad. So here's the number of b's and they're taking the derivative of, yeah, they're taking the derivative of the, so they are doing the derivative. Here's the derivative, see? All right. So the derivative of this is zero. The derivative of this, remember, derivative of an integral, so it's just e to the x minus l to the x, or e to the t minus l to the t. There we go. So they are doing the the derivative, like I, I had mentioned there. So does everyone see that? So take the derivative um, d with respect to t of everything. That's zero, and that cancels out with the integral, and you're left with this right here. So here's the expression. 
of the derivative. There's the factored form. And um, you know what? You, you find a, um, a critical number, right? Find the critical number. So where is this equal to 0? Looks like at 1 and at 5. But we are just looking at t from 0 to 4, right? So t equals 1 is a critical number. t equals 5. But we reject 5 because it's outside the parameters of the question. So um, there's something called the candidates test, which I, I don't really call it that. But the candidates test means that you want to test the critical numbers and the endpoints that could possibly be candidates for absolute max and mins. So we want to take the endpoints, which are 0 and 4. Now, we know for an absolute min, right, 4 is not going to be minimum because it's already greater than the start. But the critical number of 1, you want to find out when t equals 1, OK, um, you want to put in 1 into, I guess, this this equation right here, right, for the total number of Bs. And you want to find out if that's smaller than the, uh, the, the, the beginning point. And of course it is. So it does kind of look like this graph over here. OK, so once again, find the derivative of the number of Bs, which is this, the derivative of this. Uh, find out where that derivative equals 0 to find critical numbers. Use the candidates test, which, which includes finding the actual number of Bs at each critical number and at each end point, and then compare those. And so because the lowest number here, the number of Bs, uh, you know, as a function of time, is 2,800, uh, that's the lowest value. So it does look something like this. So this would be T of 1 right here, and this is 2,800. So it does look an awful lot like this. Okay. So that's the, uh, that's the answer for C there. And I think there were only three parts to that. So let me know if you have any questions about letter C. So a question I have for you, could you have done sign analysis here? Yeah, you could have done sign. That, that's where I was going at the beginning of the question. So if you have this, these as factors right here, if you want to do sign analysis, right, that's you put the factors, list them here, those three, and you do your negative for the negative three, you do negative positives, find your you know, 1 and 5 and so on, and then you realize, oh, I, I don't need anything past 4, so I won't ignore that. And then you can do your, yeah, then you'd see you'd have, uh, you'd have negative here, this would be 0, and then positive after that, that's your local min. So yes, um, I would say you can do uh, sign analysis there as well, for sure. Okay, any other questions? No? All right, that is the, uh, that's the work through a free response question number 6 here, and, um, yeah, I hope that helps.